still be alive. Search teams are racing against the clock to find the vessel, which is thought to have around 20 hours left of emergency oxygen. Those on board the Ocean Gate craft when it disappeared include British billionaire Hamish Harding and British businessman Shahada Darwood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman. Joining me now is Rear Admiral Roger Lane Mott, former Britain's yeah. senior flag officer and a former NATO commander of submarines. Thank you so much for joining us again, Rear Admiral. Good to have you on the programme. And Good afternoon, least, Vanessa. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to you. And at least, what would you say, some cause for now a filament of optimism in that these banging noises have been heard? Well, yes, I can understand the, the feeling of optimism from this. But what I have difficulty with, if you were in distress, uh, you wouldn't be banging on your hull every 30 minutes. You'd be rang banging on your hull, uh, hotel, and your hull every two to three minutes. And you'd be sending out SOS in Morse on the hull. So, I, 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 you know, every 30 minutes is not the sort of sound to me that is somebody's in distress. So I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, we'll have to see, obviously. But... I'm, I'm not as convinced as others about uh, the, the actual uh, quality of that information. Um, there can be so many different things out there. You just don't have a clue until you actually find out what it is. Um, the other thing that I think is important is I don't know whether the US Navy has actually sent a nuclear submarine to the area to search. Uh, they probably won't admit that and they won't tell you and you probably won't be able to find out. But I would be very surprised if the US Navy hasn't responded and is actually searching with their own sonar underwater. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to wait and see. I'll I tell you what was said to me this morning by the gentleman who has given various interviews. In fact, front page of the Sun newspaper today, I'm sure you will have seen or at least heard some of them. Um, a Brit, he's called Chris Brown, who signed up yeah. for a dive in the missing Titanic sub, pulled out, um, is questioning various things. Um, and what he said this morning in an interview, an interview that I participated in on ITV, actually, was he felt that it showed knowledge and experience to be banging on the hull every 30 minutes because it gave time in between for the silence and then the rep repetition which would give those detecting it every reason to believe that it was human beings making the noise you know if there was a proper interval and then banging and then an interval and then banging it wouldn't show panic it wouldn't show hurry 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 but it would show we are deliberately making this noise look there's a 30 minute interval here it is again 30 minute interval here it is again and he felt that it showed the experience of those people who who are in the um, in, in in the vessel rather than an inexperience or, or, or whatever, but you don't seem to see it quite that way. Well, well I don't. I'm afraid I don't see it that way at all. I, I mean, at least 15 minutes anyway. I no go no further than that. If you want to be heard and you want to be heard on a sonar boy or by somebody listening in, you, you've got to do it more frequently than that. You can create a pattern by doing it every five minutes, every 10, every 15, every 20. But 30 is too long if you're in distress, it seems to me. And I, I, uh, I think that's something that submariners generally and, and even people in this uh, you know, expedition type thing mm -hmm. would, would consider. And they may well have considered it if that's the case. What's fascinating to me is that they, there has been no attempt whatsoever. So it's clear that their normal communications are clearly gone if that really is them. And the question is, where are they? Are they on the bottom? Are they in the middle of the sea with a, a neutral buoyancy? Or are they, st are they still popping around near the surface? And we've got, we still haven't answered the basic first question. Where is it? Tell me, tell me why. Um, many people have asked this question. I have absolutely no idea of the answer, but, but, but people have wondered why there isn't some kind of tracing device placed in these submersibles, I bet you're going to tell me there is, but it's been disconnected or something, a, a means whereby the whereabouts can be traced? Well, generally speaking, in, 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 um, underneath there, there are facilities to do that. I'm not sure whether this one has got it or not. They, they rely at the moment on these pings, which is the equivalent of, of underwater text messages. However, in the military, we have a thing called underwater telephone which is not a proper telephone. It's basically acoustically speaking into a microphone and it goes over the airways. You can 
normally say that you can get a range of four to 5,000 yards, not much more than that. But I'm surprised they haven't got something like that as a backup. And I mean, there have been an awful lot of uh, written today and said about the quality of the safety of this vessel and how it was prepared and whether indeed it is safety. Because, of course, it's not registered anywhere. Uh, there's no um, rules about what it should have and what it shouldn't have. It's entirely down to the people organizing the expedition. So I think there will be a lot of questions, notwithstanding hopefully a good result, mm -hmm. the, about the, the, the actual status of this submarine before it went. Well, and the other it... thing I, want, I wanted to say was yes. that I really feel that there didn't seem to be a backup plan. There was no remotely operated vehicle immediately at hand if they had gone into trouble. And, and that seems to me to be a big error. So the French one, the French ship that's arriving, I think, around about midnight tonight, UK time, has got a very a quality um, submersible that may be able to, if they can find it, can go and get it and pull it up. Uh, but it's taken far too long for that. Uh, and they really should have had a backup plan. And, and had you been the person, um, Rear Admiral, crafting the backup plan, how would you have drafted it? What would your backup plan have consisted of? I would have had a, at least a remotely operated vehicle um, on that um, mothership or a ship immediately close by and immediately ready to go. So if there was an issue, it could go straight in uh, before it got too dangerous or got it, it went too far. And, and they didn't have one. And it's taken days to actually get one nearby. And they're, they're, they've done, I think somebody went in yesterday, for, but went down to about 600, 6,000 feet, but found nothing. So it, unless you've got a pretty good idea of where it is, you're, they're looking in the dark too. So uh, it, it's very difficult. But going back to the communication point, I think it is important. Underwater communication is very complex. And uh, it requires sound. There's no GPS, there's no radio. You have to use sound, and that sound can be emitted. And, and of course, most um, um, military submarines don't like to emit sound because that's giving their position away. In fact, you do everything in your power not to emit sound. That's why we're called the silent service. But it, it, in these situations, there should have been a more comprehensive communication system underwater. There is a facility to have a some form of um, uh, I suppose you call it a cable with 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 information going down it, um, but that 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 was considered to be not suitable for the depths they're going to. So at the moment, is the focus trying to find the location of the banging noise? And if it is, does it worry you because you think maybe it's misleading and it's not necessarily what it purports to be or what most people would like it to be? I don't think they've got much idea of where the banging's coming from. They haven't got a, what I would call a proper fix on it. Uh, they, they may have a general area, but they don't have any more than that. My understanding is that the, the um, uh, remotely operated vehicle has already been in an area that they think it, it, that was heard. But there's no definitive statement that that is actually where they heard it from. So I, I, I'm, I'm slightly nervous that that could be you know, a bit of a red herring. So it, it, it comes down to we've not got no chance of rescuing these guys unless we can find it. And that must be the first priority. At the same time, everybody who's involved in trying to recovery should be putting every single bit of equipment in place, ready to go at immediate notice. So as soon as they find it, it can act. And at this point, how, how confident or hopeful or how many prayers are you saying uh, that they do find it? Is it true that with every sort of hour that ebbs away, they're less likely to find it? Or with every hour that ebbs away, they've covered more, more area of the sea and they're more likely to find it? It's hard, you know, when you're not experienced in these matters to have any idea or grasp on whether progress is, is likely to be made or not likely to be made. Well, I think that's right. We don't know whether progress will be made. Would I give it a percentage now of finding it? 15 percent. Right. Gosh. I don't think any more than that. And that's probably a bit generous. Uh, I, I, I do feel that that, that that I sincerely hope I'm wrong. Yeah, me you know, too. I really so do, do hope I. I'm I think, wrong. I think the whole but, world but, hopes but, that you're wrong, Mirad, but, well, I think but, so. But, but I think, you know, if the if the if the Poseidon aircraft with the with the sonar boys and the, and the and the other types of aircraft that have been up 
for the last 48 hours almost continuously, if they haven't found it, even if it's in an area the size of Connecticut or Wales, the fact of the matter is that we, the chances are that it, we aren't going to find it. It's going to be on the bottom. There were reports of an, a potential implosion uh, from America earlier in the week. Uh, I've not seen any more about that. And I don't think that you can put anything on that at the moment. So um, I think we're all praying like mad. We're, we're all desperately hoping that there'll be some miracle here. Uh, and that's essentially what we need now. We need a miracle. We need to find it. And let's hope it's close to wherever these vessels are. And let's get on and get, get, get on and recover. And, and, you know, even if this French vessel arrives at midnight, they'll have that, that uh, mini sub in the water within an hour. And so there is still time. And I suspect that the guys in the, in the, in the submarine, um, they're all experienced. And certainly the Frenchman and, and Hamish is. Is that uh, and the and the and the CEO of uh, of uh, the company, uh, they should be able to be reducing the amount of oxygen they're using, uh, restricting it as much as possible, staying quiet, not giving using too much energy, and you can actually eke that out. I've been in submarines where I've, I've been in a position where we've had to eke it out significantly, and it is possible. It's hard work, it's difficult, but you can do it.